makelele makelele o makelele makelele hey there welcome to the rafiki way my name is carly nimo I'm a podcast producer and the host of a number of number one Apple podcasts over the years, including Carlosophies, Make Some Noise and Keeping Good Company. I'm also a huge long-term supporter of Rafiki Mwema. I've been there since the beginning and have watched this charity expand and evolve over the last decade and a bit. I've known Sarah Rosborg, the founder of Rafiki Mwema, for just as long. We both live in the Northern Rivers and we're both very active in our community. In fact, Sarah was a guest on my show seven years ago. So in 2015, we spoke about her dedication to this organisation and a bit about her fascinating personal story. So when Sarah reached out to me to ask if I'd like to be involved in creating a podcast for Rafiki, it was a no-brainer. Of course, I want to be involved in this. It's been a long time in the making, and over the next couple of months, or eight episodes to be exact, we're going to take a deep dive into our favourite charity, Rafiki Mwema. We'll explore what Rafiki do, their ethos, and the way they work with their children and their community, the various programs and projects they run. We'll meet the partners, collaborators, and ambassadors who help Rafiki reach new audiences and the people behind the charity doing all the day-to-day things that are involved in the running of Rafiki. And you'll learn the various ways you can get involved and support this wonderful organisation. Before we dig in, this is an all fun and games. A big trigger warning on this podcast and be sure to have the tissues handy. The reason this content can be so triggering is the very reason the charity is so important. We're dealing with children who have experienced the most horrific start to life. It's unthinkable, but very much a reality for these children. Rape, abuse, abandonment in children as young as babies. So while some of this might be hard to hear and you may find yourself feeling helpless, it's all the more reason to get involved. When children experience trauma early in their lives, their brains are altered. Rafiki's work is to remove the shame they experience and return them to the experience of innocence, to reboot the safety and love they feel in relation to the outside world so they can grow up to be balanced, loving adults, thereby breaking the cycle of abuse. With your help and support, we can change the future for these children together. So let's hear from founder Sarah Rosborg with a little introduction to the charity that is Rafiki Mwema, how they started and why they exist. Rafiki Mwema was established initially to support girls who had suffered huge and unimaginable sexual abuse. In Nakuru, where we're based, there were no homes that would take these children after they'd suffered the abuse prior to them going to the court case to prosecute their rapists. So these children were being placed in a remand centre after their abuse happened right up until their court date and that could be two or three months. In a remand centre it's just like a prison really for children so further abuse would happen. This was ridiculous for this to be happening to these children so a small rental house called Rafiki Mwema was opened and Rafiki Mwema translated from Swahili to English is a loyal friend and that is exactly what we plan to be for these little girls. And after many years of fundraising and commitment and love, sweat and plenty of tears, we have now a 14 acre farm in Kenya, which we call Doyle Farm. Um, We're lucky enough to have six houses on this farm. Four of the houses are for our boys and girls. One house is our special needs house. This is for our special need children who are with us, who are unable to return into their community due to their special needs. Um, And we'll go into that further. And one of the homes is a small house that's next to our small girl's house, which is called Makia Matoto, which translates to uh, a small angel. And this is a transition house for when new girls arrive on the farm and it's just too much for them to go straight into the small girl's house. So it's kind of, yeah, a slow transition house to let them integrate in with the rest of the small girls after their arrival. 
We also have built a small school on our farm, which we call Jasiri Rafiki. Uh, this school is for the small girls that live on our farm who are in current court cases. They are unable to leave our compound um, because their lives will be at risk. They'll be at risk of being murdered uh, by their perpetrators. So they, we try to keep the routine as best we can for them to get up and go to school and keep things as normal as we can, which is how we came up with the idea to build Jasiri Rafiki School. After witnessing one too many times of our poor children having to testify against the, these monsters in the courthouses in Kenya, we um, successfully advocated and installed the first video link in Kenya. This was one of the most exciting things we had ever done. This video link enables these children to be in a safe room away from their uh, rapist because in Kenya the, the perpetrators are able to directly question these children in court which is terrifying and it violates them all over again and of course in most of the cases we've seen these children were too terrified to speak up against them because they're right in their faces just violating them over and over again. With the video link that we um, installed, they're able to testify just looking into a video camera uh, in a safe room without being attacked or threatened by the perpetrator. They are able to have one of our staff members by their side, which makes them feel safe and really helps them along with their testimony. Um, we've successfully installed two video links into two separate courthouses in Kenya and these these video links are available not just for our girls to use but for the wider community who also needs to be protected from these monsters. The main aim at Rafiki Mwema is of course for our children to return to their home and that is if their home is a safe place and if it's not we will do all we can with our outreach team to help find another safe family member or someone in their community who they can return to. Connection to Kenyan life is the most important thing and it's it's always at the forefront of everything that we do. Um, we don't believe that kids belong in homes or orphanages and, you know, we do everything we can to return our children to a safe home within their community. And from the very moment that a child comes to Rafiki Mwema, our outreach staff work really hard with the child's family or with their community to prepare for the return of the child, you know, after we help them through the trauma that they've suffered, of course. If the child's family is unknown, which is really, really common, they will work really hard to trace their family so we can connect them to their community. On Doyle Farm, we therapeutically care for our children while they are with us. And then our outreach team also takes each child on home visits when they're with us. And on top of that, we also visit their guardians or, you know, family members, community members alone in the lead up to their return home, just to check that everything is safe and, you know, the people are safe and the environment is safe that they will return to. And of course, once the child has returned home to their family or community, our outreach team also does spot checks to make sure the child remains safe in their care. So our outreach team, is it's a huge job that they have and they, they're working seven days a week around the clock. They're, they're amazing. And when our outreach team are working with our children, working on the step down program to send them back home or to their um, community, they were noticing that a lot of the children had loving homes to return to, but because the level of poverty that the families were living in, this was um, the only thing that was making the home unsafe for these children to return to. Uh, and that's um, where the idea of Rafiki Social came from. It's a social enterprise project to assist those um, in need, whether it's a child of ours who has turned 18 and they're ready to leave us, or whether it's a family member of one of our children who needs to return home, we wanted to give these families or children the opportunities that so many of us around the world have but we take for granted. Um, you know, giving them the opportunity to support themselves and their family so they can live without worry 
about, you know, where the next meal is coming from or if they can pay for school fees. So Rafiki Social is a very new project that we've started, but a really exciting one that's allowing us to get more children to go back home to their loving family that are waiting for them. On top of this, we also run a feeding program in our town uh, in Nakuru. We call this feeding program Rafiki Matani, which translates to a friend on the street, uh, which is exactly what we are to them. They, you know, this started before COVID came along and changed our world. After our children um, who live with us on the farm, they were worried for the children who lived in town or their brothers and sisters, as they said. Our children gave up their Sundays on the farm to cook food and deliver this with the help of our aunties and uncles to town to the kids um, every single Sunday. And hundreds of kids came from everywhere and yeah, our, our children and staff would feed them. But of course, when COVID hit, they shut down the main city of Nakuru and there was a curfew in place. So this meant that, you know, these children that were living on the streets had no one in town to beg from and there was no food left in the bins because no restaurants were open and there was no one in town where they could beg from. So this meant that these kids were literally starving to death. Uh, so we reached out to our supporters and to see if we could, you know, get a little bit of a kickstart to support these kids so we could feed them each day over COVID. And that has carried on until now. We hire two local businesses to cook enough food for these children. We feed 90 children each and every day. And our staff members turn up to be with these kids as well. And not only do we just give them a meal every day, we are starting to do education days. So we have a whiteboard and each child has an exercise book and we're trying to teach them to read and write. One day we do football, one day we do beading, one day we do painting. We've started to do therapy with them as they they are willing to and, and when they want to talk to us. Uh, but the most exciting part is they've started to open up to us and explain that how they came to the streets and a lot of them are wanting to go home. They ran away from home because they were hungry. You know, they were literally starving and they were running away to town to get food and because they're so little, they don't know how to get home. The stories are heartbreaking, um, but that's what our a lot of our Rafiki Matani staff are in town every day working with these children. And, you know, this program has grown in ways we never imagined. The costs of running the Rafiki Mwema programs are huge. You know, there's so many costs involved with our family, just like your family. But we, you can imagine having 70 children on the farm and many, many who have left us into our outreach, along with the feeding program or Rafiki Matani and Rafiki Social, the costs are huge. You know, there's water bills and food bills, gas bills, electricity, education costs, clothing costs, court costs, transport for our outreach team to take the children on their visits, um, medical costs for the children with us and the children in town and, you know, especially the children that come to us with horrific injuries um, and those medical bills are ongoing. There's costs to run our vehicles, which have huge wear and tear from the condition of the roads in our area. If you've been to Kenya or, or Africa, you'll you'll understand what the roads are like here. The safety of our children is also everything to us and we need to make sure that they are safe on our farm. So we, we have eight German Shepherd dogs who are terrifying and that's exactly what we need them to be because we do not want anyone entering our farm. We have three Maasai guards who are just as terrifying unless you know them and then they are the sweetest men you have ever met. Uh, we have an electric fence around the perimeter of our farm as well. So that keeps our children with us safe. We have 46 local staff that work with Rafiki Mwema and we pay all of their wages. Uh, we pay for their medical insurances as well as the insurances of our children. Our farm is 14 acres, as I've mentioned, so there are costs to maintain the grounds of these farms. We also have a produce farm that grows enough food to feed all of our houses and a lot of people in our community as well when they need it. But we, you know, we require staff to 
work on that farm and deal with those crops and any other costs, of course, that comes with keeping this going. Our houses on Doyle Farm, they house up to 70 children. And over the years, we've had many children return home. So you can imagine the cost of living and the cost of having a family. We all know how much that costs. So You can imagine what things cost for us on the ground in Kenya with the amount of children and staff that we have, but the work that we do is so important and we will keep fighting and we will keep telling the world how important these children are. They won't be silenced and we won't be silenced because, you know, I won't stay silent and I hope that you will join me in being part of something that's making a real change. So that's a little overview of Rafiki and its roots. Now let's explore a little of the direction they're headed. So it's clear that Rafiki Mwema is a small not-for-profit with a huge mission. Through the work that Rafiki does to heal and restore children who are survivors of abuse, the entrenched cultural stigma in Kenya that's associated with sexual assault is slowly changing. It's Rafiki Mwema's mission to change hearts and minds by building rapport and trust with families, schools, villages and government officials to break this cycle of abuse. Rafiki becomes part of the community over time and nurtures a shared hope for the well-being of every Rafiki child. Rafiki Mwema aims to create a world for children in which families provide safety, stability and emotional security – Early intervention keeps vulnerable children safe. Communities refuse to stay silent. The cycle of generational trauma and abuse comes to an end. Children are able to trust, love and play and be kids. A legal and social system supports the rights of children and achieves justice for them. To achieve all of this, Rafiki has set some very specific goals for the years ahead to ensure they can grow even more effectively and impactfully and provide the best holistic care possible. So these goals include providing quality professional employee development to continually enhance staff skills and expertise, support staff financially to gain additional qualifications in order to grow one of Kenya's most expert teams in child protection and trauma-informed care, empower Rafiki Mwema's Kenyan team to become one of Kenya's most highly regarded not-for-profits through employee development, improving the organisational structure and employing an exceptional CEO to lead the organisation. Develop a program that provides support for young adults who have left formal care with Rafiki so they can successfully transition to independent life. Build on the success of the feeding program by incorporating new services that provide education and vocational training to help children escape life on the street. Improve the quality of education at Jaziri Rafiki School by equipping the teaching staff with a wide range of teaching resources and educational material and upskilling staff in contemporary teaching methods. And growing the outreach team to be able to support the growing number of Rafiki children who have returned to a safe, loving home in their communities. The foundation to these goals is financial sustainability so that Rafiki's budget isn't stretched to the limit every month. With financial security, Rafiki Mwema will be able to confidently plan for the future and invest more in their services to better meet the needs of the children they're here for. We hope this gives you a little insight into the charity that is Rafiki Mwema, why their work is so important and where they're headed. But this is just the beginning. There is so much more to this charity to explore. And in our next episode, we're going to dig further into all the different services and arms of Rafiki because there's a lot to this charity and there's a lot they do for their kids and the wider community. In the meantime, please subscribe or follow the podcast now so that as episodes are released, they'll show up in your podcast app of choice and you won't miss a thing. We'd also love your help to help us spread the word. So tell your friends and share us in your socials and be sure to tag us at Rafiki Castle on Instagram. Welcome to the Rafiki Way. Way.